हेलो फ्रेंड्स वेलकम टू आवर चैनल दैट इज एडू नॉलेज हो माय सेल्फ धर्मित पटनायक असिस्टेंट प्रोफेसर बेंगोल स्कूल ऑफ टेक्नोलॉजी फेयर विथ ए न्यू वीडियो दैट इज गुड लेबोरेटरी प्रैक्टिस व्हिच विल बी यूजफुल फॉर द बी फॉर्म थर्ड ईयर स्टूडेंट्स बिफोर गोइंग इन डिटेल अबाउट दिस गुड लेबोरेटरी प्रैक्टिस फर्स्ट ऑफ ऑल विल सी व्हाट इज द यूज ऑफ गुड लेबोरेटरी प्रैक्टिस एंड व्हेयर इट विल बी यूजफुल सो गुड लेबोरेटरी प्रैक्टिस इज मेनली यूजफुल फॉर द लेबोरेटरी हु इज टू परफॉर्म द नॉन क्लिनिकल स्टडी for the research work so this is mainly useful for the quality assurance of the non clinical study for the research work so this good laboratory practice is mainly based on this four parameter of the four dot points that is first one is organizational process how a pro, uh, organization is working and what is the method what is the regulatories they have to follow all these things that is called as the organizational process monitoring the process whatever you have to follow it as per the regulatory bodies whether you are following or not for that you have to see or you have to set a department that is called as the monitoring next one is safety studies safety with respect to the personal those who are working safety with respect to the animals whatever you are using the safety with respect to the human being for whom you are going to prepare these medicines so overall <coughs> all this data if you want to assure the quality or we want to assure our work then you have to do the documentation so that's why what is telling quality means good laboratory practice means it is indicating about the organizational process monitoring safety studies and documentation so good laboratory practice is mainly it is a organizational process at the condition under the non clinical health and environmental safety which start with the work that is planning performance monitoring recorded and reporting so coming to the uh, process how it is working so a drug company uh, when they are going for the any kind of test in the laboratory they will send the data into the laboratory or the sample they will send into the laboratories where this glp you have to follow as per the regulatories as per the international standard what are the things we have to follow you have to follow in the laboratory that is called as the good laboratory practice after performing all this data or the methods in the laboratory the data it will supply into the government or to the company for the hazard assessment or international trade so uh, like the same glp one more term it is there that is called as the gmp that is good manufacturing practice so the what is the basic difference because many of us were confused about that what is the basic difference between this gmp and glp glp it is indicating that first we can see the crosser over here the sample it will come it will supply to the laboratory for the testing wherever the glp it will be implemented or it came into the force so that means how to do the test what are the things you have to follow as per the regulatory you have to see then finally it will send the report or the data for the result analysis but coming to this gmp the raw material or the packaging material it will move to the manufacturing area wherever the gmp it will come into the egg that is called as the good manufacturing practice how to do how we have to follow the process then finally the finished product it will come out now before going in detail about this glp first of all you should see the history that how this glp came into the act and how it is added into the regulatory glp is mainly came into the part of the regulatory in the year 1970 so it came into the regulatory because of malpractice in the research and development there are so many companies are there in the year of 1970 they have started doing malpractice like manipulation of data frauding the data or uh improper method and uh, there are so many malpractice it is started so due to this malpractice uh, what happened so this glp first it came into the enforced in usa because of the fraud data submitted by the toxicology lab to the fda so the example is industrial biotest lab who has done some test on the lotion in deodorant and he has produced some fake data or malpractice data to the fda what we concluded that afterwards that the test whatever it is perform on the animals finally it came if they got the cancers so how it came that in the year of 1970 fda he came to know that there are some kind of poor laboratory practices going on in the us so he decided that to investigate all these toxicological lab so after investigation he found a data that the equipments whatever it is used in the laboratory are not calibrated 
that means the data what we are going to get it from this laboratory by this equipment is not a correct one incorrect uh, lab data or lab study inadequate testing systems everything was completely fraud and the data were manipulated so due to all this reason glp it was instituted in us in the year in the year 1978 and finally it came into effective in the year 1979 but in the year 1979 glp it came into act only in us when the time passed in the year 1981 one more new organization is started of this glp that is called as the organization for economic cooperation and development or in short it is called as oecd which uh, also publishes the glp principle as per the international standards so due to this international standard many of the country they have uh, started accepting it and they have done the agreement near about 30 countries they have uh, become the member of this oes oecd and they signed the agreement that they will accept this oecd principle after that only it came into the market that it is the international standard and all the country it is started accepting so now the thing is that what is the objective of this glp so glp what it is telling it will give the assurance that the data what it is produced by a laboratory is true there is uh, and not a single lab is going to participate in the fraud activity like submission of manipulation of data like manipulation of uh, methods anything else and also it promote the international acceptance of the test so due to these are the objectives so the main fundamental points of this glp how it is based so what it is telling glp mainly gives a stress on five different points that is first one is resources resources means organization personnel facilities equipment number two is characterization test item and test systems number 3 is rules study plan or the protocol what they have to do what they have, how they have to do what not to do or what to do in it should be everything in a written format it should be there and fourth one is results raw data final report everything should be preserved uh, in a proper manner by which it will give us the assurance about the data and the quality assurance what is telling it is an organization who will support the complete data who will verify all this data and he will certify that next coming to this principle of glp because without the principle you know, principle a organization or the system or the regulatory body it will not work so the principle of glp what it is telling test facility organization and personnel quality assurance program facilities apparatus material and reagent test system test reference item performance of the study reporting of the study and result storage and retention of the record so here what it is telling if you want to follow the glp these are the nine different points or different area you have to work and you have to concentrate properly by which it will support or it will assure that you are following we are following as per the glp regulations so first we will see about that test facility organization and personnel how a organization is working who are the members are responsible for what what work so what it is telling the organization facility is mainly based on four different area or four different part that is test management responsibilities study director responsibilities study principal principal investigator responsibility and the last one is study personnel responsibility so first we will see about the management responsibility management responsibility what it is telling it is starting with what to do and how to do they will fix a goal that what they want to do it and they will fix a parameter that how they are going to reach this their goal so here what is telling the management responsibility is that about the qualified personnel appropriate facilities equipment and material to be provided and what it is telling that the management responsibility also it is there that maintenance of the record as well as the qualification training and experience that means the personnel those who are working in their laboratory for this glp or for this method there should have some knowledge or training or experience should be there next one is that job description when a management is taking the responsibility he should divide each and every area of work who is responsible for which work by which the proper uh, work will be carried out without any confusion or without any problem 
Next, the last one is about the documented approval of the study plan. The plan which is approved that they will do according to that. It should be documented and it should be followed. Next one is that that is study of director responsibility. Director responsibility is that approving the study plan. The principal investigator he will prepare a study plan or a protocol and it should be approved by the director. And after the approval, if any amendment it is there, then it should be approved again by the director with a valid date and signature. Then the availability of the SOPs to the personnel, that is the personnel, those who are working, they should have their SOP, standard operating procedures, like how they have to do, what they have to do. Next one is that the raw data generation, that means when you are going to write a final report, the final report should be based on the raw data, you have to verify it, you have to interpret the raw data and you have to prepare a final report and both the data and the report should be preserved properly. Next one is that computerized system. Suppose any time you are going to use any kind of computerized system for the generation of data or for the interpretation of the data or for the preservation of data, it should be validated properly. That is the responsibility of the director. Next, the report what you are going to send it, it should be signed and it is the proper date which will give the authenticity. And whenever you are going to send a final report, in the backing of this final report, you have to preserve all these things like study, study plan, final report, raw data, everything should be preserved properly as a supporting document. Next, coming to this principal investigator responsibility. Principal investigator responsibility is having the major role in the experimental work or in the GLP or implementation of GLP because he is the person who is planning all the works like protocol is prepared by the investigator. Execution of the GLP or plan of work as per the GLP is responsible of this principal investigator. Management of research work like integrity of the work, designing, conducting and reporting that is complete responsibility by the investigator. So, the principal investigator has to look after each and everything and it should be report to the director and followed by director report to the management. Next, the fourth one, last one is that is about the study of personal responsibilities. When a person or a personal it is working in with a work with you, then you will find some, you will try to find out some qualities. Then only you will feed that or you will tell that okay, he is or she is suitable for that particular work. So, what are the normal qualities you will find, try to find out with the personnel? First one is responsibilities. So, responsibility means what is telling the person who are engaging or you are appointing, he or she should be a completely responsible person. Whatever the work you are going to appoint him or you are going to assign him, he should do it with a proper responsibility and he should complete it. Next one is knowledgeable. The person you are appointing for a particular work or a particular area, so, he or she should have sufficient knowledge or hands-on of experience about their particular work by which he or she will complete this work with a proper process. Next one is goal setting. So, when you are giving a work to a particular personnel, he should have a capability to design the work. How to fix, a, he should have the capability to fix a goal and how to reach that goal. That is the main important parameter or the qualities of this personnel. There is next one is no excuse. The personnel who is working with you should not give any kind of excuse that why this work is not happened due to that one, this is a problem. He should not give any kind of excuse. If any problem it is arising, he should solve it by himself and next he should proceed it. And the solution for the problem should be permanent, not for the temporary that temporary that in future again it will be arise. Next one is self-control. Self-control means he should have the capability to maintain or he should have the capability to work with a team and he should complete the work. That is called as the self-control. Next one is health precautions. Health precaution means the personnel who is working, he should be uh, properly take the precautions for himself, for the others personnel as well as for the precautions for the animals. Everything he should be taking care properly. So this all about this facilities we require for a organizations. So, this about the today's video. Next video, we will see about the remaining of this good laboratory practice. Hope this video will help you and it will help you to gain some knowledge about this good laboratory practice. And uh, these are my some reference from where I have collected my uh, data. 
and uh, if you have any kind of doubts or if you have any kind of query regarding this presentation then you can contact me uh, to the email id that is dharmaid.patnaik.gmail.com or you can subscribe to my channel that is edu knowledge hub and you can write in the comment section for your doubts and queries thank you